हेलो एंड वेलकम गाइस रेडियो जिंदगी सुन रहे हैं आप 1550 एम पर एंड एज प्रोमिस्ड आई हैव विद मी शाह पिराली एंड वी आर ब्रिंगिंग शाह पिराली लॉ शो टू यू सो लिसनर्स इफ यू आर लिसनिंग टू अस एज यू नो दैट दिस इज अ कॉल इन शो एंड यू कैन डेफिनेटली गिव अस अ कॉल इफ यू आर लुकिंग फॉर सम आंसर्स सो दिस शो वी ब्रिंग एवरी ट्यूजडे टेन टू टेन थर्टी एम एंड हियर यू कैन listen uh, the discussions about immigration law about the employment based immigration law and as you know that shapir ali who is the founder president and managing attorney of shapir ali prali law group is a member of american immigration lawyers association as well as the state bar of california also a very passionate advocate about human rights civil rights and social actions and you know he has a strong interest in the, and of course the knowledge of political and legal system if you have any question you can definitely give us a call studio lines will be open shortly but if you would like to connect the shapir ali law group the direct number to contact them is 510 7425887 once again the number to shapir ali law group located in new york california is 510 7425887 or the website is pirali law dot com p w e r a l l y law dot com with that let me welcome the man himself on air and let's start today's show hello and welcome how are you doing today i'm doing well very i'm doing well i hope you can hear me well and uh, thank you so much always uh, a pleasure to be with you it's uh, i'm the couple of shows was kind of recorded but i'm back on air I took a little break but uh if you need, of course if you need any help uh, the help's always there so anything i'm going to tell you today is my opinion you should not act or refrain to act solely on the information provided you should contact an attorney if you have any questions and vedika do you have anything right now for us uh, anybody calling or I, I just, yeah uh, i would like to remind listeners that the studio lines are open now 5107701550 that's the studio line number 5107701550 call in if you have any quick question regarding immigration law or uh, specifically employment based immigration or any other question you would like to ask shapra ali yes indeed verika as as you know one of the things that everybody asks especially in the committee is a visa bill pain we saw a retrogression on the eb1 which is not really something good because a lot of people were counting on that having said that a retrogression in eb1 is happening because a lot of people are applying on eb1 now i see a lot of people who are not even um, lawyers trying to 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 do those cases and uh, this is going to backfire i can bet on it because people are thinking okay it's easy money quick money so they're just getting into it they think they are an expert but the truth is that you cannot practice law without a license so that's i remind all those people who are trying to cut off and uh, try to make some few bucks quickly on this they are not liable to anybody and uh, hopefully they end up mostly in jail, in custody or in jail in prison because this is really uh this is really kind of um wrong because they will end up by messing people up so that's just a footnote there uh eb1 retrogress as you know to january 2012 and even the new visa bulletin that just came out is still going on on 2012 uh and eb2 january 2011 for india eb3 2009 that's the chart final action date now the pro- filing date is a little bit better i should say june 2022 which is a good thing okay so that's a good news june 2022 if they accept the filing dates on june 2022 it's going to make a big difference because hopefully they will at least people will be able to file their i140 and then also use that to get their e because uh, i think the last month bulletin was a little bit different it was both going actually on uh, on uh, no it was it was the same actually right so at least that's if they accept the june 2022 uh the filing date that means it's it's good good news as for for um for people in uh, first category for other countries it's current uh, so employment base is current on the chart 2 chart 1 is different uh, chart 1 is a final action date what what's the difference a lot of people ask me final action date means everything is ready they're going to issue your green card if all your paperwork is there but the filing date is means you can file your adjustment of status if your dates are current 
They will keep it there. They will give you an EAD and advance parole, but you make it to the line. This is very, very important because especially for people who have children who are aging out under the Child Status Protection Act now, if the case is filed, the child will be protected. This is something new just, just came out. Hopefully, they won't change it again because Child Status Protection Act is a pain sometimes when, when it comes to how how they define it. And um, hopefully now by, by accepting this, that means the children are protected. So that's one thing um, that is something that uh, is happening. But we are hoping the final action dates for EB1 by October 1st will go back to something more reasonable for India. So let's uh, let's hope on that. But people outside India or someone who was who is even Indian but born outside. For example, let's say you live in the Middle East, your parents live there, you were born there. You get this advantage of using the dates from, from those countries. That means countries, other countries of the world. So this is for the visa built in. And a lot of people are calling me, what do you predict for EB2, EB2? I stopped doing that. Well, I didn't stop really, but I just don't want to do it because lately I have not really got any right because a lot of political factors involved and a lot of people are jumping from EB2, EB3. So there's a mess in the system. Uh, we have to admit it. But at the end of the day, we still have this ability to kind of see. My hope is by October, when the new financial uh, fiscal year takes place, we're going to see a movement on all of them. I'm not sure on EB3, but EB2, hopefully, it will go up by a couple of years. Not a lot, by the way. Now, that's my take on this. And again, this is pure calculation. So the visa built in is still good for EB1. So, so take advantage of it. And we are doing a lot of EB1, by the way, EB1A, which are self petitions, EB1B, which are petitions uh, that you need a petitioner. Uh, self petition means you don't need any employer. And also EB1, EB1C, that one also you need an employer because there's an intra transfer of employees. So all those are there. It's just a matter of you making sure that you can actually take advantage of it, right? So a lot of people don't even know they qualify for them. So call us. Hopefully we'll have a system where you can uh, upload things and at least uh, answer the questions. And once you answer a few of those questions, we will already have an idea where you stand. Because the full analysis takes time. And and if we want to do a full analysis, most of the time we'll charge for that because we're basically doing the case for you. So it's better just do a quick analysis and then we take it over. We do the entire case for you because it will cost as much almost. So these are these are the, the what you have in hand right now. Now on the other hand, you we are seeing a lot of things that at the border, um, mostly in the committee. Uh, fortunately, we don't really m- most people don't suffer from that, but there is a lot of things happening, including one thing that now is um, is really making the news, and actually because of the movie of the movie that came out, um, I think it was Sound of Freedom. And uh, we made a movie, actually, ourselves now. Um, yesterday, we released it. It was a short movie on the U visa and human trafficking. We looked at it from a perspective of, a, of an immigration lawyer because while you see what, a, what you see in that movie is basically fiction, well, based on true stories, but this is something we deal with pretty much on a regular basis as immigration lawyers. So before even that movie was, was released, I didn't even know it was going to be released, and so listeners, you are listening to Shah Pirali Law Show and Shah Pirali is right here with us. And as mentioned, you can connect with the great team of Shah Pirali Law Group by calling the number 510-742-5887. That's the number to Shah Pirali Law Group located in 37600 Central Court Suite 202 in Newark. And the number once again is 510-742-5887. 5887. The website where you will get all the information is yeah. piralilaw.com. Once again, the website is piralilaw.com. And if you have a quick question, um, I would like to remind the listeners you can give us a call. Studio lines are open. And we have uh, 15 more minutes in the show. So the number uh, to the studio line is 510 770 1550. 510 770 1550 for any quick question uh, to President and the founder of Shah Pirali Law Group, Shah Pirali. I'm back. I'm back. I'm so sorry. I think the connection got lost because today I'm doing the show remotely. 
I'm not in the studio. And um, I was mentioning that, um, you know, uh, the, the movie that came out, uh, Sound of Freedom, it's really something that happens pretty much for us, um, for at least me. I've seen few cases like those where people are smuggled in the United States, trafficked, etc. And the visa that is attached to that is usually the U visa to protect them. So what we did uh, with a couple of friends, we made a short movie, which we released actually yesterday. Uh, it's, a, it's a very short uh, 20 minutes movie on, on, a, on a situation. It's a fiction based on some reality. It has nothing to do exactly about the case because I, um, we made it to, to represent what we are trying to, to convey as message. And uh, we would like you to watch it and share it. I will send it to you, Vedika. Maybe you can post it also for me. And um, we I can was going to also... ask. I was going to ask where can we watch this movie? <laughs> it's on YouTube, actually. It's free. Uh, it was not made for commercial purposes. It was just made to to create awareness that those things happen, and it's happening a lot lately with all the wars happening around the world. Uh, climate change. Um, people are selling themselves, actually. Some of them. I'm not saying in, in terms of all parents selling their children, or some are getting kidnapped, uh, etc. And this is a story of, of a girl that actually went to help. But watch the movie. It's a short one. Um, so I'll send you the link and hopefully you can post it there for us. Sure. And also, um, I wanted to, to mention that the U visa applies for a lot of situations. A lot of people don't know about it. And now they are issuing even a, an EAD with those U visas. So take advantage of it if you are um, unfortunately or fortunately in America. Unfortunately, that means you have been victim of a crime. Unfortunately, the crime you are able to pass through that, and now you are a little bit okay. We can file for the U visa and keep you in the U.S. Ultimately, it leads to a green card. So the whole process, unfortunately, now I think another unfortunate situation. It used to take six months, but when the time, the story that I've kind of um, used a little bit and made it fiction, etc., it was taking only six months to get the U visa. But now it's taking almost like six years. Oh, my God. <laughs> but still, yeah, still is better than waiting for, for, for India, unfortunately, yes. for employment base, right? Yes. So if you are eligible for that, you should take advantage of it. And I have more details on my website. And the U visa is for victims of crimes, people, victims of domestic violence. Uh, uh, victims of fraud, uh, basically blackmailing, um, you, uh, also a lot of people who basically are, uh, let's say you are somewhere in a shop, someone come and, and do a hijack of the shop, and they basically kind of put a gun on your head, and you are a witness, you have the police, you might get a U visa. So call us if you need help on that, 510-742-5887. Any calls from you, anything Yeah. Uh, so you yeah, I, I was question? getting a call actually and it got disconnected. So I would like to remind the listeners that we still have time in the show. If you're trying to call us, uh, 510-742-5887 is uh, Pirali Law Group's direct number. Or if you have a quick question, 510-770-1550. That's the studio line number, although Shah is doing the show remotely today. But he will be able to answer your questions. So do give us a call. Studio lines are open now. And yes, sir. so I, I will take the privilege and ask the question I have in my mind. As you were talking that U visa might take uh, like from six months to six years now. So what about the visa uh, when you like when you file for green cards? Uh, it's called F4, right? When you are filing for your uh, relatives, uh, the green card uh, mm -hmm. case. So then how much time usually mm -hmm. it takes? Now, what, what is the shift there? Well, yeah, let me see on that because I, the new one just came out. Let me see for September. So F4 right now, they are for India, is going on October 2018. So um, F4, no. But for, because you have different relatives, right? You have directly for, for U.S. spouse, that is going to 2019, but they are accepting, I think, the second one. Um, let me check, because I didn't, I, I didn't have a chance to even study that. You have the F2A. And the F4, right? Yeah. Hold on a second. Yeah, let me see the dates because I have to, I think right now for India, F4, yeah, it went to 2005, which is not good. But the F2A is the one probably you're asking for spouses, right? Yes. That's what you're asking. Yeah, that one is 2018. It went, it went, it went down a little bit. 
but um, the F2A for India on the filing of the of the case, that means the what we call the no the final action data. Okay, I'm I'm my stuff is a little bit confused with the new chart. So F2A they are going to. Um, 2023, I'm sorry. September 2023. So it's pretty almost current. Yeah. And I think the, the second chart also is current, which is a good news because it went backward, I think, last month. Wow. So that means, that means you should be able to, to file for, for people and they can file it's 2023 and they're processing to, uh, 2018. But at least you will be able to file probably because, um, the only disadvantage is that if you are coming here and you are on some kind of short-term visa, you won't be able to file it. But if you have a longer-term visa, mm -hmm. remember when you're filing uh, for someone and you're a green card holder, that person has to maintain status to file the adjustment of status. So if that person doesn't have a status or full out of, of status, you won't be able to file it. And status means F1 visa, B1, B2 visa, um, H1 visa, etc., H4, etc. So. Be careful on that, but it's not that bad. Um, it is now, uh, t the filing date is 2023, uh, if they accept it, which you have to also, even your, what I'm talking about here is a visa bulletin from the State Department. You have to check with the USCIS which days they are accepting. Mm -hmm. They had a big fight because they were trying to accept the lower days, which is basically the furthest one, and ultimately they got in trouble, so they went back to the filing dates. This was, the filing date means you could file your adjustment of status, right? And in October, I think the same F2A was, was actually current and now it went backwards. So it's, it's not a great news <laughs> actually, but still okay. We can, we can manage with that. So it's good you're mentioning that because I always focus on employment base and then I don't look at the family base. Uh, but yes, employment base when, uh, family base went, went backward. That means if you, you want to, to file for your spouse, you're a green card holder, you are going to have a delay. Um, there's a delay of, uh, right now we are, but it's September 2023, which means basically, um, we're still good, right? We're in August. Yes. So you might still be filed. So it's kind of current without being, I don't know why they put it like that. That's what it was confusing to me because usually they would put current, it's current, right? Mm -hmm. On the, on the filing date, but the, but the, the processing date, which means the final action date, that one has gone backward a little bit, but the filing date is pretty much current. So, which is good. So that means if you enter now, you are on this valid, you can still file your adjustment of status. Okay. But confirm with me because I'm reading this really quickly right now. I didn't analyze it because I was so focused on the employment base, but you're right on this. The FQB went a little bit. Uh, kind of weird because they're saying September 2023 and we are in August. Usually they put current on that. But let's see how things are going to unfold. And, um, and I'm hoping that this is at least uh, actually it's still good news. That means we can, people will still be able to file. But the only thing is that you won't get the green card right away until the dates become current again. But uh, at least you will be able to file. Yes. Thank you so much for taking the questions. And listeners, you also have this opportunity. We have like five more minutes in the show. If you have a quick question, Shabir Ali is right here with me, 510-770-1550. That's the studio line number. And for all the detailed consultation, do contact Shabir Ali Law Group directly. 510-742-5887 is the number. Once again, 510-742-5887. Or you can log on to their website, piralilaw.com. That's very good. So we're almost done. So we have another five minutes, but let me talk a little bit about, about the other types of visas that we are dealing with right now. A lot of people are doing what we call the compelling circumstances EAD, but unfortunately we are not seeing great results on it. But at least if you file it and you are losing your job, you can stay here at right. least to find another job. It will protect you. Mm -hmm. But the good news is that from what I'm seeing, I think the, the, the job market is picking up back. Uh, they say last month we added 65,000 jobs in IT, which is good news. And uh, hopefully that will continue like that, the trend. And uh, once the trend starts, it usually keeps going on because I'm already seeing it. A lot of people are calling me to do the H1B transfers, etc. So at least... For a lot of months, we have been talking about layoffs, layoffs, layoffs. Now we're talking about hiring, hiring, hiring. So it's good. 
Yes. Uh, but that doesn't mean everybody is getting a job, unfortunately. Uh, but many people in the technical sector are getting are getting a job, and um, let's hope it continues on that trend. But of course, it will go like a. I think it will go a little bit like a roller coaster, up and down. So. Let's see how things unfold in the next two, three months. We will know exactly where we stand. But um, the good news is that they did add a lot of job last month, and I can see it from my cases too. Mm-hmm. And now, now, and I think talking about cases, yeah, we heard a yeah, lot ahead. of people laid off, but we never heard people moving out of the country due to that reason because they also got a job in a month's time. Maybe exactly. they did get the job back. exactly. Yeah, the few people who move out, they were not really moving out, but yes. they did. They took a break, and then they go on vacation, or they're working or, remotely, or maybe they so, were always ready to go. Exactly, I, they just I got a reason. I don't have. Yeah, ninety-nine. I'll say well, I can't give a percentage, but I'll say ninety-five percent of people I've spoken to, mm-hmm. their their goal was to stay and continue the, the fight here, right. and continue staying here. They don't really go back. Uh, because the truth is that most people will not adapt back. They, what they call home is no longer there. Home is here now. And uh, the, and that's what a lot of people, when they go, they, they get hit with reality. But sometimes they don't have a choice. They have to go. Mm-hmm. But most people did, you're right, and now they're getting back their jobs. So things are working out somehow. But at the same time, you need to be proactive. Like EB1 is a good option. Uh, national interest waivers are good option. Even you're from India, it's good to have it because uh, the way that the market is so volatile, if you have a national interest waiver, even if it is an EB2, what it will do, it will allow you to take this with you anywhere you go. That means if tomorrow you don't even have a job, you can still file for your green card uh, once you get the national interest waiver I-140. Same thing if you are in India, you have your national interest waiver, the days become current, you can just quickly come here, file your adjustment of status somehow, or even process the case to the U.S. consulate. The other thing with national interest waivers and EB1, A, uh, those two, you don't need an employer. So you can be in India, we can file it. You can be in Pakistan, we can file it. We can be in Nepal, we can file it. In Africa, we can file it. So this is something you should take care of and then look into. Give us a call. 510-742-5887. And just to remind people, I will send the link of the movie. Please watch it and share it. It's about human trafficking and the U visa. And I thank you all for listening. And to recap, I think I have another one minute, right? Exactly. I know you're smiling at the <laughs> one minute. So the one minute, I just say uh, the visa built in are good and bad. And we are hoping it will get better. But don't have too much hope. Uh, EB1 will do will get better probably. Uh, EB2 and EB3, I don't have a lot of hope, but I am hoping there will be some movement up. As for other visas, look into other visa. The U visa is a good option. EB1 is a good option. Um, national interest waivers are good options. O1 visas are good options sometimes. So check it out. Give us a call five one zero seven four two five eight eight seven. And anything I told you today is my opinion. You should not act or refrain to act told you the information provided. You should contact an attorney if you have any questions. Thank you, Vedika. Thank you, everybody. We'll be back next week, same time. Thank you so much for joining us on air. And listeners, uh, you were listening to Shaparali Law Group. Do contact the great team of Shaparali Law Group located in New York five one zero seven four two five eight eight seven. That's their direct number. PiralliLaw.com is where you can visit for more details. P-E-E-R-A-L-L-Y Law.com And you can listen uh, to Shaparali Live every Tuesday 10 to 10.30 a.m. With that, this is Arjavedika signing off. Sunte rahe radio zindagi.